All right, welcome to my Call of Duty gaming channel. I am Nessinator. Now, I have a lot to cover in today's commentary. I might actually put up two videos today, two gameplays and two commentaries, just to cover all the topics that I want to cover today, because there's been a lot going on here with Call of Duty Black Ops 3 this month so far. Of course, you PSN users have got access already to the Awakening DLC, which everybody knows at launch had a lot of issues. You know, I never thought I'd be grateful getting the DLC 30 days later after the PSN users because I'm an Xbox One player. But it looks like it turns out to be a good thing because you guys can be our beta testers and work out all the issues with the DLC before it gets released to us. Hopefully that we do not get these same issues when we get the DLC because I'll tell you what, man, that would suck if Activision makes the same mistakes, or I should say Treyarch, makes the same mistakes of giving us these maps with a bunch of glitches, wall hacks, and auto map glitches. I'm hoping that's not the issue. Uh, I'm thinking that this will all be resolved, and by the time we get the DLC, it'll just be uh, a very smooth transition. So it's a, probably a good thing that we are now getting the DLC a little bit later. But of course, you guys all know this game has been filled with so many patches, so many updates. I mean, it's been called Call of Duty Patch Ops because there's been nerfs and buffs up the wazoo. Weapons, specialists, now we got uh, DLC weapons coming, of course. And they're not really DLC weapons, they're supply drop weapons, but we're going to get into all of that. And again, if I don't cover certain things in this commentary, I'll put up another video to extend this commentary. But uh, let's get into it first with the buffs and the nerf that's going on. Of course, everybody's talking about the Vesper getting a nerf. Now, I think it's a good thing, obviously. I've made a commentary before saying that the Vesper was my go-to tryhard weapon, and it still is, because anytime I get killed with the Vesper, I take out mine. I, I hate getting killed by that gun. Yes, it's OP. Yes, it drops people quickly. Uh, you put it in the right player's hands, and that gun can just be a nightmare. So I always have a class with the Vesper just in case. You know, I try to use other guns. I'm obviously working on my Dark Matter camo. Dark Matter's almost there. No, I'm not almost there. Um, you know, I just finally finished my LMGs. The gameplay, of course, you guys are watching is me using the BRM LMG here in my quest for headshots and all that and camos. I did finish all my LMGs, so now I'm off to sniper rifles. And I don't think I'm going to be getting any sniper rifle gameplay for you guys. I told you guys this before. I'm not much of a sniper. I never have been. In the previous, I would say, five Call of Duty titles, I got less than 100 cumulative kills with sniper rifles. I just do not use them. I just do not like using sniper rifles. That's just me. Uh, but in this game, it's probably the worst title to try to learn to snipe. <laughs> so it's been quite the uh, weird transition for me to be a sniper all of a sudden. But I play really campy. You know, I'll pick a room or a building. I'll throw some shock charges around, C4, you know, trip mines, whatever. Uh, I use the hive specialist to put hives all around me because I can't walk around with a sniper rifle and be productive. I can't quick scope, you know. I mean, I can, but I'll probably be getting my ass just dropped over and over again. So I try to camp it out and, you know, use the sniper rifle the way you're supposed to. Pick a spot and just pick people off. It's been fun to use, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely slower campy gameplays coming out of me with that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I am still continuing my quest for Dark Matter, still putting in the work for it. But anyways, going back to the uh, nerfs and buffs, yeah, that Vesper nerf, you know, I think it's a good thing. And again, this is, hasn't happened yet for Xbox One, I don't think. We're getting these patches a little bit later. I don't even think we've received the large Awakening DLC patch that Xbox, not Xbox, sorry, PlayStation received maybe a week or three days before the release of the DLC. So we still have yet to get that one. And all of these patches we're getting after the fact, which is kind of good, uh, you know, again, because I can come on YouTube, I can hear people's reviews of them, kind of anticipate what's going to happen to certain weapons and know how to fix them accordingly in my class loadouts. But, um, yeah, so the Vesper caught a nerf. Uh, supposedly the Weevil caught a little bit of a buff. I haven't used the Weevil since I've gotten it Diamond, but I definitely will try it out once these patches come through because I did like using the Weevil. The Weevil was a fun little gun to use. And, of course, they're nerfing and buffing specialist abilities and specialist weapons still to this day. So I don't think they're going to ever stop doing that. You know, I think there's always going to be some small tweaks going on. They uh, obviously buffed Reject again. I think Reject does need to get uh, buffed a few more times. Again, I'm trying to work on the hero challenges for that uh, ability, 
And it's just, it really is useless. And again, I'm glad they broke it versus it being used by everyone and it being OP and just annoying. Because it was one of those abilities I just didn't feel should be in the game. So, I, I think it's a good thing that nobody really uses Reject. I think it's one of those things that in Call of Duty, once you're dead, you should not have any kind of second chance. That's just me. But anyways, uh, you know, hopefully this buff makes getting those uh, four kills within a game easier. Because I still try to get up from using Reject. And I always get gunned down. So... Uh, you know, getting up faster, that would definitely help. And maybe a little more power when you get up would also help. Just a few things, uh, notes there, I think, about Reject. And then they buffed the Tempest and the Sparrow. The accuracy for those two weapons, the hitbox, I guess you can say, has been widened. And now you can get more chances of getting hits, one shot, one kills, with those specialist weapons. Now, I find it funny. You know, there's a lot of DLC weapons. I'll probably save the DLC weapons talk for the next commentary. And my whole idea, uh, and my whole, th you know, kind of thoughts about supply drops and everything in DLC weapons. I'll get into that in the next commentary. But, you know, there are a lot of one-shot kill weapons in this game. There is, let's face it. There's a lot of, all, I mean, most of the specialist weapons are one-shot, one-kills. And, um, you know, the melee weapons, one-shot, or I would say one-hit, one-kill. And now they're adding crossbow, which is one-shot. And there's also a pistol now they're adding, which is one-shot. And again, I don't want to get in too much into the DLC weapons. I want to talk about that in the next commentary. But uh, this game has a lot of one-shot, one-kill weapons. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing, if that's a bad thing, if people are going to start griping about that next. Uh, because there's just a lot of weapons out there. You know, you're getting in these gunfights and all of a sudden you're just getting popped by, by some dude that who just panic fires and drops you with one shot, which sucks. And I'm sure more of the community will start griping about that uh, soon, especially if they continue to, you know, give us more one-shot, one-kill weapons in the, in the uh, pistol range, you know, stronger sniper rifles. I don't know, man. Uh, it's it's interesting to see where this game is going. I think, uh, you know, a lot of these games out there nowadays are going to be heavily dependent upon microtransactions. I don't know if you guys ever played Warframe for the Xbox One. It's one of these games, I think, tried a new style where they didn't even charge you for the base game. You, you just downloaded it for free, and basically if you wanted to build your character up or build buy weapons or, you know, customization looks and stuff, you had to spend money on that. And before you know it, you're $60, $70 deep in microtransactions, which, you know, you already much in essence bought the game. And I think a lot of games are going to be going this way. I think we're just seeing the beginning of a new trend here with Call of Duty that maybe these games will start coming out and their, their base model, which you go buy at GameStop, will be a lot cheaper. And then there's just going to be a crap load of micro DLC to buy. You know, there's going to be $5 for this certain gun. And people will call it a pay to win. But, you know, if you're not paying $60 for the game and you're paying, let's say, 30 and then now you just have to go out there and buy microtransactions. I think it's going to start going that way. I think this is going to show a change in tide here with a lot of these games. Do I agree with it? It's not so much whether or not I agree with it. I just think that's just the way it's going to go. I mean, it's making them more money. Uh, Warframe ended up being very, very successful giving the game out for free and just having to depend on microtransactions. And people don't see the money they're spending when they're spending $5 here, $10 here, $5 here, $10 here. It adds up. And uh, I can see that happening here with Call of Duty. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot more people out there buying supply drops and COD points to try to get these weapons. You guys know I don't do that. Uh, I will definitely save up my crypto keys. I got some more supply drop videos coming up and some stats, stats videos as well. So stay tuned for all of that. And we'll get into all that with the uh, future commentaries here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this gameplay and this commentary. Stay tuned. I got another one coming. Thanks for everything. This is Nessinator, and I'm out.